Today we're looking at Luminar AI, that's Luminar Artificial Intelligence, the successor to Luminar 4, which brought us some cool tricks like AI sky replacement. Here we've got a whole bunch of other AI functionality in addition to just being a solid standalone photo editor. So I've been very impressed with this beta copy, which I believe is indicative of what will be released for the holiday season. We still don't have a release date yet, but it's available for pre-order, so it's for sale, presumably at a discount of some sorts because it is a pre-order. You can check the link below for the details there. Let's get into this and you can make up your own mind whether this is worth your hard-earned cash. Quick disclosure, we are partnered with Skylum, the company that creates the Luminar software, and we earn commission if you purchase it using the link below. A couple of observations at the outset. The company are marketing Luminar AI as a completely new piece of software, and, and it is. They've built it from the ground up. It's much faster. It's a much smoother user experience. I noticed it straight away. It's a joy to use. Everything's cleanly laid out in a logical manner. Luminar AI is the piece of software that Luminar 4 always wanted to be, but they've started from scratch, and they've done it right this time, and this is a genuinely good piece of software. That being said, if you look at functionality, much of the functionality is the same as Luminar 4. So if you already own Luminar 4, then you need to make a judgment as to whether or not you want to pay up for some of these extra AI capabilities. So if we jump into the software, you'll see what I mean about the clean and easy to use layout. The catalog tab is pretty self-explanatory. It displays all the photos that you've imported into the software. You can import a folder with images or edit a single image one at a time. Jumping into templates, we have some of the flagship functionality of Luminar AI. Here it looks at the image and recommends a whole bunch of presets, or templates as they call it, to dramatically improve your image pretty much with one click, using all its AI technology. Now, I don't see myself actually spending a huge amount of time here, and this is where we need to make a distinction between entry-level photo editors and more advanced photo editors. And I want to make this point because most people are going to focus on these templates when they're talking about this software, which it's fine because it is very impressive, but that doesn't really work for me. I like to get into the nuts and bolts of editing a photo, so I wouldn't want to overlook the fact that beneath all these templates and user-friendly tools, we have a really good, solid photo editor that's a complete match for Lightroom, I would like to add, in many ways much better than Lightroom, as you will see when we get into some of the portrait editing type stuff. Over in the edit tab, we have all the adjustments you'd expect to see in a photo editor. Much of this is very similar to Luminar 4, but we also have some of the new AI functionalities, which I'll show you in a second. So in the essentials, we have all the things you'd expect to see in terms of manipulating colors in a photo, in addition to adding some vignettes, denoising the image, sharpening it, so on and so forth. We then have the creative panel where we can do our AI sky replacement. We can add objects via augmented sky. We have atmosphere AI, which is really cool. I'll show you that. Sun rays, dramatic mood, which are our LUTs, toning, matte, mystical glow, all kinds of cool stylistic ways of improving our image. Portrait tab, this will blow your mind. I'll show you some of the things you can do with a portrait here with face, skin, and body AI. Really, really cool. In the pro tab, we can do our lens adjustments, so we can de fisheye and adjust for the nature of certain wider angle lenses, for example. And we have a bunch of other stuff, including clone and stamp, which is a very powerful way of removing unwanted objects from your image. And we can do some spot color adjustments with dodge and burn. I want to show you some of the new AI functionality here. AI Sky Replacement and AI Augmented Sky are the same as in Luminar 4 and they do the job really, really well. So if you've not seen our tutorials on that, do check those out. The new one I want to show you now though is AI Atmosphere and it does a really cool job of adding fog or mist to an image. If you look at this image, I know it's super stylized, but I just think it looks cool for cars when you do images like this. Guilty, I know it's not really very realistic, but I think it's nice. Anyway, we've added some fog. The software has made a three-dimensional map of that image. It understands that the car is in the foreground, the logs are in the midground, you could say, and the clouds and trees are in the background, and it layers that fog accordingly. It doesn't just put a big blanket mist all over the whole image. It's a three-dimensional representation of fog, and it does it instantly. Let me switch the fog off. Boom. There's the difference. 
quite a dramatic change. I'm not saying either are better, they're just different and if you want this kind of look, you can switch it on. You can of course change the amount of fog, so we can turn that all the way down and you can turn it all the way up. And as for the depth, that controls the extent to which the fog reaches into the foreground. So if we just want the fog in the background, let's take the depth all the way back there. Whereas if we want you know, lots of fog, we can basically cover the car in the fog as well. But we've settled somewhere down here and I think it's really, really cool. In this image, I've done something similar with the mist in this case. Now, I know I've gone to town with the sliders and it's a really crass photo edit, <laughs> but I just enjoy it. Guilty. Look at the before and after. That's just a bog standard, not very good shot of this car. This is what we got in a matter of seconds, quite frankly, with Luminar AI. And if we switch the mist off, well, that hurts the eyes a bit, if I'm honest. So let's switch the mist back on and you can see again, we've got that layered mist. In the portrait tab, we have some new AI technologies to adjust people's skin, the shape of their face, the shape of their body. Now don't shoot the messenger, this is just the world in which we live. Uh, I'm just showing you the software, you can do with it as you wish. But I've picked this stock footage shot for a reason because we're not dealing with an 18 year old gorgeous model on a beach in Hawaii. We're just dealing with a fairly regular guy here. So let's see what we can do here. In the face tab, we can increase the brightness of the subject's face here with face light. If I slide it all the way to the top, you can see here that we've brightened the skin. Now it's only affected the skin. iPhones do this in the portrait mode and I've been wondering when we're going to be able to do this on a desktop piece of software and here we have it. It adds a little bit of pop, especially if you've underexposed the skin tones. Very, very useful. Now here's where it gets a bit freaky. Slim face. Look at this. I slide it all the way to the top. It's just brought his jaw all the way in. Look at the before and after, before and after. Now I'm not saying which one is better, but it's potentially a very useful tool. We'll come back to eyes and mouth and we'll come back to skin later as well, I think with a, a female subject, but let's go to the body here. So look at this, the shape of the body. Now this would be all controversial if I was slimming down a gorgeous young female model, but we're not. We're gonna try and bring his tummy in a little bit. Let's see if we can do that with the shape slider. Obviously you need to be careful not to go too far. In fact, let's go all the way to the top and let's bring the abdomen in as well. Okay, I'm not sure that's an improvement as such. We've gone a little bit too far before, after. You can also see the way it's affecting the other parts of the image. So let's tone it down to something a bit more realistic. Let's just, this is the starting point. Let's just bring his tummy and his shoulders in a little bit. Okay, there we have it. Let's look at the before and after. Before, after. As I say, I'm not saying this is better, but I think it's a genuinely useful tool for photo editors and you can see how quick it is. Looking at this handsome chap, let's see if we can enhance his eyes a little bit. Well, in the iris we have his original iris, but we can flick through all kinds of eye colors, blue, brown, green. We can even give him owl eyes, should you wish, although I don't think I would recommend that. So let's go with some blue eyes. I think that's a little bit too strong. Let's tone that down a little bit. We'll zoom in here so you can see closer. I will go down, tone that down a little bit more before, after, just with a single click. We can add an iris flare, as they call it, which just gives us this kind of catch light in the bottom half of the iris. You have gotta be very careful not to overdo this, obviously, because it can look ridiculous, but this kind of look is not uncommon in a portrait. I'll change the color to brown, see what happens. Look at a before and after. Yeah, and it's so accurately just affecting the right part of the eye. We can whiten the white parts of his eyes here with eye whitening. We'll take it all the way to the top. Maybe that's a bit too far, is it? Let's zoom out. Well, maybe not. Of course, this is the question of discretion and if you're not sure if you've made a good adjustment, then go away and come back 10 minutes later and see it with fresh eyes. But on the whole, I think that actually looks quite natural and we can look at the before and after. Pretty spectacular and extremely fast. Coming back to the shot of my wife, Alina, let's try some of the tools that we've not used yet. Of course, we can't improve upon perfection here, but this is just for the sake of demonstration. 
We haven't used enlarge eyes. Now, I'm assuming that making eyes bigger is a thing in portrait retouching, I guess. So let's give her massive bug eyes. Now, of course, I think that looks a bit daft, but it's amazing the way it's done it. And if that was desirable, you could slide that up a little bit and just increase the size of the eyes. I'm not gonna do that here. There's absolutely no need to, obviously, but it's pretty spectacular what can be achieved. Eye enhancer adds a kind of twinkle to the eye. We'll slide that all the way to the top. Get the before and after. Before, after. It's a bit much, but I think we'll just leave a little bit of that in there. Dark circles removal. It does a pretty good job of just adding a little bit of brightness under the eye. Now, generally speaking, on portraits, you want a nice flat light so it doesn't show wrinkles, it doesn't show imperfections in the skin. So we want to remove those dark shadows under the eyes if possible. And if we look at a before and after, before, after, yeah, it's done that quite effectively. Improve eyebrows, kind of darkens the eyebrows. I guess that's a thing as well. In portrait photography, I'm not gonna change anything there though. In terms of mouth, we can add some saturation to the lips. Let's look at before and after. It's, it's completely perfectly identified where the lips are and added saturation. We can add redness. Boom, some lipstick. We can darken the colour of those lips. And if Alina was showing her teeth, then we'd be able to whiten her teeth. It's absolutely amazing. Now, I don't want any of that in this instance, but to have that at your fingertips is just incredible. Moving down to skin AI, let's soften the skin a little bit. We'll turn this up and let's see what we get. You've got to be very careful not to get too much of a glow effect on the skin, but that that is pretty good, I'm not going to lie. It's all a question of taste and discretion. We'll slide it all the way to the top, but that does look like it's been a bit over-processed, I have to say. It looks a bit plasticky. But it is still amazing, and it's retained all the detail around the eyes, the eyebrow, the nostrils, the lips. If you were doing this in Lightroom, you'd have to go around this manually with a brush, and it would take ages. This has done it with one click. So let's turn this down to 25. So we've got a little touch of it. Shine removal can be effective, but what's really cool as well is defects removal. Let's click on that and see what it does. And I got rid of that little spot there on Alina's lip. Now that's part of her face. We're going to leave that in. It's not a defect, thank you very much. But in certain circumstances, with one click, you've got rid of imperfections on the skin. I'll very quickly demonstrate some of the other AI functionality here because it is quite good. Now composition, I have to say, is a little bit hit or miss. It's supposed to identify the subjects, the various items in your image and give you a better composition, but as yet I haven't found really that it does that. Maybe it will improve. So let's reset that and I'll just do a manual composition here. It's a nice idea. Apparently they've studied hundreds of the world's best photographs from the best photographers and all this kind of stuff. But as I say, so far the results don't really back that up. Now AI Enhance, on the other hand, I do think is a genuinely useful tool. It was also in Luminar 4. Here we have a fairly flat image. Nothing's really popping here. AI Enhance looks at that, looks at the bright parts, looks at the dark parts, sees how it can enhance the exposure and the contrast in the image and the saturation or vibrance if required. So here in AI Accent, if we slide this up, it's doing a really good job of bringing out those shadows and bringing more attention to the car, which is of course the subject, and also bringing a little bit of detail back into the sky by bringing those highlights down. If we look at a before and after, really, really quick and really effective. If you wanted to do that manually, which is what I would normally do in the past, I would go into the light tab here, I would slide these shadows up, you're always looking at this histogram, reference to the histogram. Slide the highlight, highlights back down. Maybe move the black point down a little bit. Move the white point back up. Something like that. I'd then probably go down here and do a little bit of an S curve just to add a little bit of contrast within the black and white points that I've already set. And I get something like that, give or take, before and after. And I've got a good starting point for grading. We'll reset that and go back to AI Enhance. And as you can see, it basically does it with one slider for you. Pretty epic. Sky Enhancer, if you so wish, you can bring some detail into the sky automatically. For the sake of demonstration, let's just leave it like that. A quick before and after. Awesome. 
AI structure. This is kind of comparable to the clarity slider, clarity and texture slider in Lightroom, but the whole idea behind the AI is that you don't want to really ever hit someone's face with that. It looks terrible if you hit skin with clarity and texture, but other parts of the image you might want it. So it identifies that and leaves those out. Now in this instance, we have nothing really that we want to leave out as such. So if we slide that up, boom, you get that super dramatic look, which I really like for these kind of images. But let's say you just wanted that on the car and you didn't want all that structure and clarity on the rest of the image because you want the attention to be on the car. This is where we hit the masking tool and we just paint over the car instead. Boom, there we have the structure on the car and not on the rest of the image. So it really makes that car pop, but it leaves the, the rest of the image looking fairly natural. If we switch that off and switch it back on, there, I, I think it's better actually. We have a fairly natural looking image where the car pops. So there you are, Luminar AI first look. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I personally am very impressed from a number of perspectives. The software, it feels good to use. It's fast, it's responsive, it's not laggy, which was something that did plague Luminar 4 a little bit in the past. It's been completely rebuilt from the ground up and you can tell, so that's a big thumbs up and I can understand why the company's promoting it as a new piece of software, because it is. As I say though, in terms of functionality, this is very much an upgrade on Luminar 4 with some new AI capabilities. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that the templates and all that automation is fantastic, one click to just transform your image, but this is still a fully fledged professional piece of photo editing software, even though it's very accessible for beginners. But as professionals, there is automation in there that will save you tremendous amounts of time. As you can see, particularly on the portraits, the functionality is incredible and on the landscape stuff as well and the car shots, as you've seen. The automation will speed up the process for professional photographers unquestionably and it is better. I in the past often have felt that when some of these gimmicks you could say come along they are good fun but ultimately when the dust settles i never use them and i go back to my old workflow of doing things manually if i'm editing a portrait i will never now manually paint all over the skin and work my way around the eyebrows and paint some color on the lips and whiten the eyes i'm never going to do that it does it in one click it's absolutely sensational the same for the sky replacement you're never going to manually do that in Photoshop or some other slower way of doing things if you have this alternative. So it's not just a, a quick fix, it's actually an equally good and in some ways better alternative to the original way of doing things. That's my two cents. As I say, let me know what you think in the comments below. I think I'll put out some more videos on this piece of software. We'll compare it with Lightroom, help you understand whether you should upgrade on Luminar 4, etc, etc. I think I've said enough. I will see you next time.